Hello and welcome to this video tutorial on using structured references in Excel formulas. Here I have an Excel file that contains an Excel table, which I can verify because I see my table tools design tab is available and open. And in it, of course, are structured references. First, I'd like to show you some formulas with regular cell references. Here in column N and O, I have two formulas, and they're both showing standard cell references. For example, in column N, it's an if statement embedded with an AND as a lot in our logic test, referencing G2, H2, and I2. Over here, something similar, an if statement with an OR. Now, let's look at these same formulas that have had structured references used instead of standard cell references. So I'm switching over to my house data 2 and you can see here in N2 instead of my regular cell references I'm showing inside of square brackets qualifier names which are of course my column names. Over here in O you see I also have qualifiers inside of square brackets, the column names, of course, but in addition there's an extra set of closing and opening and closing square brackets around each qualifier. It includes an at symbol just before that qualifier. This comes up when you use the click method. Column in I created using the type in the name method. Next, I'd like to demonstrate that for you. I'm back on the house data worksheet, but I've changed the view a little bit by moving things over and turning off formula view. Here I am in O2. Now, I would like to replace my F2 with the reference to the qualifier sale date. So I'm going to first select the F2 start with my opening square bracket, this is the type it in method, and start typing. You'll notice down below you will see this little blue field pop up because it knows that this is a structured reference. And so when I see just the one I want hit the top of the list, I simply use the tab key, follow that with a closing square bracket. I could type the whole thing in myself instead of selecting it that way, but I find this to be more convenient for me. Let me show you that again. I'm going to select next, E2, and I am again, start with an open square bracket. E2 is list date. It gets to the top of my list, highlighted in blue. I press the tab key, follow it with a closing square bracket. Now, let me show you a different method, the click method. So I'm selecting cell D2, and here instead of typing, I'm simply going to come over and click on cell D2, and it inserts for me that entire qualifier, the column name inside of square brackets, with that second set of square brackets and the ampersand. Now I should be able to just click on the enter button and see that it's still working. But you can see, here's my formula, all taken care of. If you're having problems seeing everything, or if you prefer to work inside of dialog boxes, just open up your dialog box. If you are not seeing everything you think you're supposed to, for example, the logic test is an OR, but we don't see it all, click on that little button there, the collapse dialog button, so you can see everything that's in this. Now, in summary, keep in mind that creating the formulas with structured references makes them easier to understand. If you use the click method, it can help prevent misspellings. I find it simpler for myself. It does, of course, add that extra set of opening and closing square brackets and the at symbol. The most common problems you're going to encounter is you misspell a qualifier name and therefore it doesn't find it. Secondly is mismatch square brackets 
or mismatch parentheses. Sometimes people type in parentheses instead of square brackets or vice versa, and those can all cause you problems.